All right, guys, we're back here with Win Dixie. We're going to read three chapters today. Chapters, uh, let's see, chapters 13, 14, and 15. And um, the point of today's lesson is that, sorry, let me get myself centered on the screen here. The point of today's lesson is that um, characters follow this predictable path through a book. Uh, and we talked about this a little bit in Stone Fox, but books sort of go a, a, a a normal way and uh for characters that's like it's sort of shaped like a mountain right like it gets uh we get to know the character and then they face some like little trouble and things get steeper and harder as they go so like they face more and more challenges as they go and we're certainly going to see that with opal and because of Win dixie so uh we know that the challenges she faced early in the book they're just testing her a little bit but what really is going to be challenging for her is when we get later on into the book and uh, she faces harder challenges when that mountain gets steeper. Now, we also know that mountains have like two sides. Like you go up a mountain and then you go down a mountain. So we're going to follow her on her journey up the mountain when she's facing challenges. And then uh, the, the top, the, uh, the peak of the mountain, that's when she faces like her biggest challenges. And then everything from that point is we go downhill, like we get a resolution. We find out um, how the problems are solved, how she overcame those challenges. So uh, as we're reading, that's what I want you to pay attention to today. And uh, with that said, uh, let's get started with the next three chapters. All right, chapter 13. Me and Winn-Dixie got into a daily routine where we would go and leave the trailer early in the morning and get down to Gertrude's pets in time to hear Otis play his guitar music for the animals. Sometimes Sweetie Pie snuck in for the concert, too. She sat on the floor and wrapped her arms around Winn-Dixie and rocked him back and forth like he was a big old teddy bear. And then, when the music was over, she would walk around trying to pick out which pet she wanted. But she always just gave up and went home because the only thing she wanted was a really big dog like Winn-Dixie. After she was gone, I would sweep and clean up and even arrange some of Otis's shelves because he did not have an eye for arranging things as I did. And when I was done, Otis would write down my time in a notebook that he had marked on the outside, one red leather collar, one red leather leash. And the whole time, he did not in any way ever act like a criminal. After working at Gertrude's Pets, me and Winn-Dixie would go over to the Herman W. Block Memorial Library and talk to Miss Franny Block and listen to her tell us a story. But my favorite place to be that summer was in Gloria Dump's yard. And I figured it was Winn-Dixie's favorite place to be, too, because when we got up to the last block before her house, Winn-Dixie would break away from me and my bike and start to run for all he was worth, heading for Gloria Dump's backyard and his spoonful of peanut butter. Sometimes Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry would follow me. They would holler, There goes the preacher's daughter visiting the witch. She's not a witch, I told them. It made me mad the way they wouldn't listen to me and kept on believing whatever they wanted to believe about Gloria Dump. One time, Stevie said to me, My mama says you shouldn't be spending all your time cooped up in that pet shop and at the library sitting around talking with old ladies. She said you should get out and get some fresh air and play with kids your own age. That's what my mama says. A lay off her, Dunlap said to Stevie. Then he turned to me. He don't mean it, he said. But I was already mad. I shouted at Stevie. I said, I don't care what your mama says. She's not my mama, so she can't tell me what to do. I'm going to tell my mama that you said that, shouted Stevie, and she'll tell your daddy and he'll shame you in front of the whole church. And the pet shop man is dumb. And he went to jail, and I wonder if your daddy knows that. Otis is not dumb, I said, and my daddy knows that he went to jail. That was a lie, but I didn't care. And you can go ahead and tell on me if you want, you big, bald-headed baby. I swear, it about wore me out yelling at Dunlap and Stevie every day. By the time I got to Gloria Dumpshard, I felt like a soldier who had been fighting a hard battle. Gloria would make me a peanut butter sandwich straight off, and then she would pour me a cup of coffee with half coffee and half milk, and it would refresh me. Why don't you play with them, boys? Gloria asked me. Because they're ignorant, I told her. They still think that you're a witch. It doesn't matter how many times I tell them you're not. They think that you're just trying to make friends in a roundabout I think that they're just trying to make friends with you in a roundabout way, Gloria said. I don't want to be their friend, I said. It might be fun having them two boys for friends. I'd rather talk to you, I said. They're stupid and mean, and they're boys. Gloria would shake her head and sigh, and then she would ask me what was going on in the world, and did I have any stories to tell her? And I always did. 
chapter 14. So in that last chapter there, in chapter 13, we learned a little bit about her relationship with Gloria, and we also learned a little bit more about her relationship with uh, the Dunlap boys and uh, how it's not going so great. Uh, yet they're still remaining characters in the book, and uh, that means that they're probably going to have an important part here as we move on. Chapter 14. Sometimes I told Gloria the story of Miss Franny Block that Miss Franny Block had just told me, or I imitated Otis tapping his pointy-toed boots and playing for all the animals, and that always made her laugh. Sometimes I made up a story, and Gloria Dump would listen to it all the way through from beginning to end. She told me she used to love to read stories, but she couldn't read anymore because her eyes were so bad. Can't you tell me some? Uh, can't you get some really strong glasses? I would ask her. Child, she would say, they don't make glasses strong enough for these eyes. One day, when the storytelling was done, I decided to tell Gloria that Otis was a criminal. I thought maybe I should tell an adult about it, and Gloria was the best adult I knew. That's kind of what we talked about in class, right? That um, She was in a situation that she probably should speak to an adult about, so now she's deciding to do that. Gloria, I said. Mm-hmm, she said back. You know Otis? I don't know him, but I know what you tell me about him. Well, he's a criminal. He's been in jail. Do you think I should be afraid of him? What for? I don't know, for doing bad things, I guess, for being in jail. Child, said Gloria, let me show you something. She got up out of her chair real slow and took hold of my arm. Let's the two of us walk all the way to the back of this yard. Okay, I said. We walked, and Winn-Dixie followed right behind us. It was a huge yard, and I had never been all the way in the back of it. When we got to the big old tree, we stopped. Look at this tree, Gloria said. I looked up. There were bottles hanging from just about every branch. There were whiskey bottles, beer bottles, and wine bottles, all tied on with string. And some of them were clinking against each other and making a spooky kind of noise. Me and Winn-Dixie stood and stared at the tree, and the hair on the top of his head rose up a little bit, and he growled deep in his throat. Gloria Dump pointed her cane at the tree. What do you think about this tree? I said, I don't know. Why are all those bottles on it? To keep the ghosts away, Gloria said. What ghosts? The ghost of all the things I done wrong. I looked up at all the bottles on the tree. You did that many things wrong? I asked her. Mm hmm, said Gloria. More than that. But you're the nicest person I know, I told her. I don't mean I haven't done bad things. That doesn't mean I doesn't, haven't done bad things, she said. There's whiskey bottles on there, I told her, and beer bottles. Child, said Gloria Dump, I know that. I'm the one who put them there. I'm the one who drank what was in them. My mama drank, I whispered. I know it, Gloria Dump said. The preacher said sometimes she couldn't stop drinking. Mm-hmm, said Gloria again. That's the way it is for some folks. We get started and we can't get stopped. Are you one of those people? Yes, ma'am, I am. But these days I don't drink nothing stronger than coffee. Did the whiskey and beer and wine, did they make you do the bad things that are ghosts now? Some of them, said Gloria Dump. Some of them I would have done anyway, with alcohol or without it, before I learned. Learned what? Learned what is the most important thing. What's that, I asked her. It's different for everyone, she said. You find out on your own. But in the meantime, you've got to remember, you can't always judge people by the things they've done. You've got to judge them on by what they're doing now. You judge Otis by the pretty music he plays and how kind he is to them animals, because that's what you know about him right now, all right? Yes, ma'am, I said. And them Dewberry boys, you try not to judge them too harsh either, all right? All right, I said. All right, then, said Gloria Dump, and she turned and started walking away. When Dixie nudged me with his wet nose and wagged his tail, when, I saw, when he saw I wasn't going, he trotted after Gloria. I stayed there where I was, and I studied that tree. I wondered if Mama, wherever she was, had a tree full of bottles. I wondered if I was a ghost for her, the same way that sometimes she seemed like a ghost to me. That's the end of chapter 14, and we have one more to go today. So that chapter was pretty deep. We got some um, some information about Gloria. Um, we know that um, 
Opal has shared her I, uh, her concerns about Otis, and uh, Opal got some advice from Gloria, and that we and some really important advice for us too, and that um, we can't always judge people on things they've done in the past. We need to look at what they're doing right now and see how they're treating people right now. Um, and uh, Gloria also mentioned that we don't know what what Otis had done. So um, I, you know, personally, I think that we still need to be concerned until we know a little bit more, but I also understand what Gloria is saying and that we need to give people a chance. Uh, we need to understand them. And we also understand that everybody makes mistakes and uh, we need to give people a second chance from those mistakes sometimes too. All right. Chapter 15. This is the last one for today. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library air conditioning unit didn't work very good. And there was only one fan. From the minute me and Win dixie got to the library, he hogged it all. He lay right in front of it and wagged his tail and let the blow his fur all around. Some of his fur was pretty loose and it blew right off him like a dandelion puff. I worried about him hogging the fan. And I worried that the fan might blow him bald. But Miss Franny said not to worry about either thing. The Wind dixie could hog the fan if he wanted and she had never in her life seen a dog made bald by a fan. Sometimes when Miss Franny was telling a story, she would have a fit. Those were small fits. Uh, they were small fits, and they didn't last long. But what happened was she would forget what she was saying. She would just stop and start to shake like a little leaf. And when that happened, when Dixie would get up from the fan and sit right at Miss Fanny Block's side, he would sit up tall, protecting her, with his ears standing up straight on his head like soldiers. And when Miss Franny stopped shaking and started talking again, when Dixie would lick her hand and lie back down in front of the fan. Whenever Miss Franny had one of her fits, it reminded me of Wind dixie and a thunderstorm. There were a lot of thunderstorms that summer, and I got real good at holding on to Wind dixie whenever they came. I held on to him and comforted him and whispered to him and rocked him just the way that he tried to comfort Miss Franny when she had one of her fits. Only I held on to Wind dixie for another reason, too. I held on to him tight so he wouldn't run away. It all made me think about Gloria Dump. I wondered who com comforted her when she heard those bottles knocking together, those ghosts chattering about the things she had done wrong. I wanted to comfort Gloria Dump, and I decided that the best way to do that would be to read her a book, read it to her loud enough to keep the ghosts away. And so I asked Miss Franny, I said, Miss Franny, I've got a grown-up friend whose eyes are going on her, and I would like to read her a book out loud. Do you have any suggestions? Suggestions, said Miss Franny. Yes, ma'am, I have suggestions. Of course I have suggestions. How about Gone with the Wind? What's that, I asked her. Why, said Miss Franny, it's a wonderful story about the Civil War. The Civil War? I said. Do not tell me you have not heard of the Civil War. Miss Franny Block looked like she was going to faint. She waved her hands in front of her face. Well, I know about the Civil War, I told her. That was the war between the South and the North over slavery. Slavery, yes, said Miss Franny. It was also about states' rights and money. It was a terrible war. My great-grandfather fought in that war. He was just a boy. Your great-grandfather? Yes, ma'am. Litmus W. Block. Now there's a story. Win dixie yawned real big and lay down on his side with a thump and a sigh. I swear he knew that phrase, now there's a story, and he knew that it meant we weren't going anytime, anywhere real soon. Go ahead and tell it to me, Miss Franny, I said. I sat down cross-legged next to Winn-Dixie. I pushed him and tried to get him to share the fan, but he pretended to be asleep, and he wouldn't move. I was all settled in and ready for a good story when the door banged and pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson came in. Winn-Dixie sat up and stared at her. He tried to smile on her, but she didn't smile back, and he just laid down again. I'm ready for another book, Amanda said, slamming her book down on Miss Franny's desk. Well said Miss Franny. Maybe you wouldn't mind waiting. I'm telling India Opal a story about my great-grandfather. You are, of course, more than welcome to listen. It'll just be one minute. Amanda sighed a real big, dramatic sigh and stared past me. She pretended like she wasn't interested, but she was, I could tell. Come sit over here, said Miss Franny. I'll stand, thank you, said Amanda. Suit yourself, Miss Franny shrugged. Now where was I? Oh, yes. Litmus. Litmus W. Block. And that is the end of our reading for today. We are uh, up to chapter 16. We'll continue with it uh, next time. Uh, and one thing I wanted to mention uh, in terms of what we read today and the assignment that you have uh, for today is that 
uh, the patterns of you know how a character's story goes are kind of predictable, uh, like we mentioned in the beginning, and that helps us make predictions. So we can use what we know about our characters, and we can use what we know about how stories usually have that like shape of a mountain, where like we continue they continue to face challenges, and usually those challenges get harder and harder as the story goes until we get to the very top, and then there's a an ending, a resolution. Things get figured out and solved. So what I want you to think about today is what do you think the big challenge that Opal is going to face will be? Um, so what do you think it's going to be? And based on how she has acted and talked so far in the book, how do you think she will handle that challenge? So what challenge will she face? What it will be a big thing, the, the climax of the book, the uh, the biggest opportunity for her to face a challenge and how do you think she's going to handle it um, in the end? And again, based that on evidence from the book and what we know about her so far. All right, guys, uh, I enjoyed those three chapters. I hope you did as well. We learned a lot about our, our main character. We learned a ton about our secondary characters and uh, hopefully we learned a couple of lessons for ourselves along the way too.